Hello, today I'd like to talk about Persian wedding ceremonies, Persian interfaith wedding ceremonies. And if you're watching this video, perhaps you are Persian marrying a non-Persian or um, a non-Persian marrying a Persian. The key element um, in a Persian interfaith ceremony uh, is the souffle. The souffle means the marriage spread, and it is ancient in history, uh, rich in symbolism and beautiful to behold. And I say that at the ceremony. Uh, each family place, places their own artistic um, influence on the souffle, even though there's certain elements that are common to all souffle. Souffle means the marriage spread, and the souffle ald is the souffle ceremony. Now I've done hundreds. Another uh, key element um, in Persian ceremonies is poetry. Poetry lives in the Persian soul. It can be the poetry of Jalaladin Rumi, who is one of the most read poem, not the one of, I think the most read poet in the world, more than Shakespeare. It could be Hafez or another um, Persian poet. Um, sometimes these are done in Farsi and in English. But very key in an interfaith Persian ceremony is uh, to explain all the elements and what is going on for the non-Persians. And of course we balance it out with other traditions, say if you're marrying a, a Catholic or a Jewish person, or but right now we're just talking about the souffle. So here's one that I did for one couple, and each one I do a little differently, depending on the couple's wishes and the parents' wishes and what's on the souffle. So um, as I said, the souffle dates back over 2,500 years in Persian. Literally, it means the marriage spread. As you can see, it is truly a visual feast beautiful to behold and rich in symbolism. Each family places their own personal and artistic touch on the souffle in terms of the selection and arrangement of its items. The mirror is a symbol of purity and clarity. It is said that as the groom enters the room, the first thing he should see is his bride. The candles lit on other either side of the mirror, and by the way, sometimes they're candelabras, beautiful candelabras. One represents the bride, the other the groom. They ensure the couple's luminosity and wisdom in all aspects of life. If you were doing a religious ceremony, you would say God's luminosity and wisdom in all aspects of life. Asfand, wild rue, is the incense placed here beautifully rendered in the shape of a gardenia. That was in Leah and Zach's ceremony, but I have seen it rendered into a butterfly, a dove, a symbol of the Persian empire. Each family does it differently. It is to protect the couple from all harm. That's a more relevant way of saying um, the originals is to keep away evil spirits. Nogal is the white sugar candy. Nabat is the crystallized sugar formed here into a bowl. And that particular ceremony was formed into a bowl, which is common, but sometimes it's different. It's formed on sticks or other things. One was a rose. Um, these along with honey and pastries guarantee sweetness. Bread, herbs, and cheese symbolize abundance and affluence. And sometimes upon the bread, there are written words like badik which means congratulations. The colorfully painted eggs and walnuts bring fertility, and they're usually um, painted gold and silver. The roses scattered about the souffle express the hope that beauty and ro romance forever adore the couple's life together. Or sometimes there are vases of flowers, which symbolize the same thing, or rose water, which I particularly love too, which is scented um, on the souffle. In the seven brilliant colors of the rainbow, the symbol of hope, the united threads of love and commitment are carefully sewn into the marriage spread. So here, the um, 
women are sewing the marriage spread while we're talking and um, originally the true symbolism is to keep the lips of the mother-in-law shut uh, but most of the people don't want to say that so I came up with this that no one would say anything harmful against the bride and groom but I've had one Persian bride who wanted me to say that I did and everybody left it says, as you can see, the bride and groom's mothers, and by, by the way, in this case it was the mothers, but sometimes we have mothers and aunts and cousins and friends do it, only all the females, have throughout our ceremony been rubbing sugar loaves, and they're like cones, they're beautiful, um, above the couple's head, as if to say, may only sweet joy and happiness rain upon your lovely heads. And before we begin this, I actually invite um, it's sometimes the mothers or the aunts, so the, we decide who's going to do this, to hold a white cloth about, uh, above the bride and groom's heads, which signifies God's protection. And then usually we can con conclude the sofre with some poetry, and it can be the poetry of Rumi or Hafez, uh, and it can be read in both Farsi and English or just in English. Um, there are other wonderful traditions uh, that I love is um, uh, the tradition of the three refusals. Not every couple chooses that. Uh, in Christianity, there's a declaration of um, consent. It's similar in that the, the bride is asked uh, three times if um, the officiant has permission to go on with the ceremony. In other words, she's consenting. Uh, so the first time they call it the three refusals, but she really refuses twice. And then says, yes, the first time she feigns shyness. She puts her head down, doesn't answer. And everybody starts shouting in Farsi and in English or just Farsi or both. Uh, she's in the flower, she's in the garden picking flowers. She's in the library reading. They make excuses for her. She's not here. Uh, the second time I ask again, and again, she feigns shyness, and everybody starts shouting um, these excuses. And then the third time she says, yes. I had one bride who was so, she was Persian, so excited. She said, yes, the first time. And I said, you're supposed to refuse. <laughs> and everybody laughed. Um, another uh, I love is at the end, uh, we, uh, we had them feed each other honey to seal the marriage with sweetness. Um, Sometimes they use their little fingers, sometimes just a little spoon, uh, which is lovely. Some, sometimes I've done it right after I explain the sofre and the poetry is read, sometimes at the end of the ceremony with a kiss. You need to be creative and interfaith intercultural weddings. Um, uh, there's also often a gift giving at, at the end of the wedding, which is a lot of gold, beautiful gifts for the bride and groom. So that is the sofre, which I love, love. Um, as I said, Persian weddings are full of joy, rich in history, sumptuous to behold, and poetic. Uh, so I hoped that helped those of you who are having interfaith Persian ceremonies and with two traditions, you are twice blessed. I wish you a lifetime of joy and happiness in each other's arms. And if for more information, you can read my book, Joining Hands and Hearts, Interfaith Intercultural Wedding Celebrations, or go to my website. I have three websites, but the one that would help you would be Interfaith Intercultural Wedding Ceremonies.com. That's plural interfaith intercultural wedding ceremonies .com. okay mabruk masalama